When you play the Game of Thrones, you subscribe and like. Or you die. There is no middle ground. All right, hello YouTube. So we're back on the Grease Goblins YouTube channel, and today's video is going to be a Winds of Winter prediction slash theory video for Wyman Manderley. Now, Wyman Manderley is a very interesting character within A Song of Ice and Fire. We know he has a lot more going on than what meets the eye, and he's a really cool character. I also do want to say, on the top 10 political players that I did, Wyman Manderley, I actually think I should have put him in there. I didn't think about him too much when I was doing that video, and I kind of forgot about him a little bit, and it was mentioned in the comments, and I think he definitely deserved at least an honorable mention in that video. But uh, yeah, just wanted to address that before we get into today's video. And also, if you would like to see more content like this from me, subscribe, like, and comment for more of this type of content. It really helps out the channel reach more people that might like this content. And yeah, let's get into it. So, Wyman Manderley. Wyman Manderley is an interesting character because at first we're thinking that he's kind of someone that is supporting the phrase slash Lannisters because we see that in... In the books, we see that there's like a fake Davos plot. Like Davos is killed to the outside world, but in reality, Wyman Manorly saves him, more or less. And sends him on sends Davos on this mission to go get Rick on to, you know, basically put the Starks back in power because the Manorleys and White Harbor in general owes a lot to the Starks. And Wyman Manderley is kind of just playing this two-faced game where, where he's more or less trying to get the Starks back in power, but he's undermining everything that, that Roose Bolton and the Freys are trying to do. He even kills some of the Freys. It's not confirmed, but I think it's pretty obvious. He killed a few of the Freys on his way to, you know, Winterfell. And it's almost even, it's even hinted at that he did a Frey pie type thing, which if you guys want to see me do a bigger video on, you know, Frey Pie, I think it's a great theory. I definitely think it happened. I think Wyman Manderley definitely is that type of guy to do that. And I definitely think he, you know, cooks some uh, Freys. I think really that the Arya thing where she cooks, you know, the Freys into a pie and then feeds it to Walder within the show was something they took directly from the Wyman Manderley theory, which I think is really fun. But, uh, yeah, so Wyman Manderley, like I said, is doing a lot of things like this. He's, he's causing a lot of unrest in general in Winterfell. So what ends up happening is that Bruce Bolton sees this, and being kind of smart, he sends out the phrase and the Manderleys to kill Stannis because he sees all the infighting and realizes eventually this is going to lead to just a battle within Winterfell. So the Manderley forces alongside the Frey forces end up... You know, we know that they're going to attack Stannis. Now, I've said this in many videos. I think this is going to be a win for Stannis. I think Stannis is going to use the ice that, that they've been fishing on eventually to lure in these Frey forces. The Frey forces will go out on the ice, the ice will break, and then they'll die. That's more or less the shortened version of what I think is going to happen there. I think the Manly forces will betray the Freys and will go to Stannis' uh, banner. Because we did see earlier that why Manly did say to Davos, you know, we will help Stannis and stuff, reclaim the North and all this, if you get Rickon back and we install Rickon as the rightful heir to Winterfell and the North in general. And I think this will happen. I think this is where the Manleys kind of turn face and they go to the cause of Stannis. Now, what becomes of Wyman Manly after this? So I think what happens to Wyman Manly after this relies a lot upon if Stannis wins. If Stannis does not win this battle, there is a good shot Wyman Manderley will be either imprisoned, killed, or something like along those lines. But I think Stannis could win this battle and then die of some sort. Because I just see that I've seen a lot of theories where people are just saying how they think Stannis would win this battle, where he dresses up his soldiers as fresh soldiers, opens up the castle, and they, you know, end up winning. Definitely could see that being a big outcome. If Wyman Manorly does survive, let's say he survives the Battle of Ice and Winterfell and all that, I think more or less he'll be the staunchest survivor, or not, he will be the biggest supporter of putting either Rickon back. If, if Davos does get Rickon, which I think could happen, 
I don't think Rickon will be the same. I think Rickon is going to be a completely different character than, well, not completely different, but a even more wild kid than he was before. And I don't think he's going to be somebody that will be a suitable candidate to rule Winterfell in the North in general. So I don't know. I know. I know. I think why Manly is going to want a Stark. I just think that's what's going to happen. I don't think Rickon's going to be the one. So Bran coming back probably won't happen till maybe around the end of this next book. Uh, Winds of Winter. So I don't think Bran's going to be the character. I do think that when Jon, if he is resurrected and he leaves the Night's Watch, which I think is very likely, he will be the person that they decide to be, at this point, the ruler of the North, maybe until Rickon comes of age or Sansa comes back or something like that. I think Jon definitely will be in charge. It just doesn't make sense for me to put Rickon in charge because he just is not fit to at this point. So, Wyman Manerly, again, I think will just kind of be a character where he's a main leading support for the Starks and their cause. And maybe we see him end up dying because he is super fat. He's unhealthy. We could see him dying because of that. He's never going to be in any wars. He's not fit really to do that. So, I think Wyman Manerly is a good character that will probably live throughout the most the end of this story unless the others get to him. I feel like as long as he survives the Winterfell plot, I think he'll live on. I, I don't I don't think there's a chance he dies because he's never going to be in a situation to where he would die. But yeah, that is really my Why My Manorly video. I don't have too much on it because the problem with Winds of Winter is there's so many subplots and plots going on that a lot of these minor characters, kind of their stories need to get condensed down and shortened because we can't have this many plots going on right now. George, the reason I think Winds of Winter is taking a long time, besides the fact that George is not giving it his entire time and he's not putting as much into it, or he, I, I won't say as much into it, but not focusing on it solely, you know, with having a bunch of other projects going on, that there's just so much going on that, I mean, just think about it, right? I've been doing a YouTube channel breaking down all these characters and all this. I'm not even close to running out of ideas on videos to do with Winds of Winter and the next book. That just shows me and should show you guys how much content there really is behind Winds of Winter that he has to wrap all these things up in a way that doesn't leave a bunch of plot holes and is satisfying. That that can drive you nuts and does take a long time to do. It's just 11, you know, 11 years. That's kind of crazy. But yeah, thank you guys all for watching. I hope you guys like this video. If you would like to suggest a character for me to do, let me know and I will try to do them as soon as possible. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. If you think this has a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention.